Please welcome Heidi Doherty. I'd like to begin with some prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for being here with us today, for your spirit, Father, that leads and guides us into all truth. I ask you, Father, to lead me uh, in your words today, Lord, not my own, in your heart, Father. Please, Father, cover my insufficiencies and let your truth come through in me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I wanted to share with you this morning a little bit, just a tad bit, about my earlier life. Uh, I was a young woman, and I found myself facing huge responsibilities, much more than I could handle. Um, along with a lot of confusion in my life. And I was really in despair. And praise the Lord, he led me to his word. And I want to share with you the first section in scripture that really opened my heart up to who God is and opened my heart up to the fact that I was not alone. Um, the fact that he was there. I was led to the words of Jesus in Matthew 6, and I'm going to read them for you now. Matthew 6, verse 25. For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air that they do not sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth more than they? And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Do not worry then, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles e eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. I cannot tell you what the power of those words did for me that day. I tell you literally that my heart came to life. I was moved out of despair. I was moved out of a place of hopelessness into a place of hope. And my life literally was never, would never be the same. God put me, his word put me on a new course. And that is how powerful God's word is. And I know each of us here have probably experienced that. You know, the word, he says it's living. And I ate that word that day, and my life turned around. It wasn't perfect. It's still not perfect, but my life totally turned around. I just wanted to, 10 minutes to share is a lot to say, but I'm going to try to brief it up and get it done in 10 minutes here. 
I wanted to compare my life. I thought about where, where am I now compared to that day that I read that scripture and I came to life. There was a fire in my soul. I wanted to know this God. I wanted to know who he was and what I meant to him and would he take care of me. I wasn't alone. I wanted to know there was a fire burning. Well, I thought about that's a long time ago. It's about 30 years ago. And I thought about my life today. And I have to say that over the years, the fire has dulled. I don't like to say that, but I have to be honest with you that the fire has dulled. It's not that I never have fire in my soul, but the thing is that over time, we get a little bit tired, we get a little bit stale, and um, I had to ask myself, do, do I still, does this word still have the value and the worth to me that it did that day? Do I understand the power that this word has to bring me to life and to bring others to life? And, you know, I had to be reminded of that. And I have to say that there are times in my life now, and I don't believe that I'm alone, that we allow life to crowd God out. We allow, allow the things in our life to crowd out our time with him, our, to seek him through his word, and that has happened to me, and I know that when I don't give him the time, when I don't get the food that I need, I feel the deficiency in my life. I know that we all do. You, you just get that feeling you're off track. Things just don't go right. You're not treating people the way you're supposed to treat people. You have responsibilities. We all have responsibilities. But what we're doing with them when we don't have his heart is we're just going through the motions. We're not, we're not handling those responsibilities in life today the right way and with his heart because we haven't gotten our daily bread. We haven't gotten our food. Excuse me. But the good news, the wonderful news, is that what happens when we return? I know what happens for me, and I thought about one of the songs we sang this morning, that uh, I feel like dancing, because I do feel like dancing, because I know what his word does for me. When I return to him, all of a sudden it's as though the perspective on life gets right again. Everything falls, starts to fall into the right place. We're loving people the way we're supposed to be. We don't have the weight on our shoulders. And so I understand why God says he exalts his word above his name. His word, every word is true, and it represents his heart. It is, it is him. And so... Uh, my encouragement is uh, that if you find yourself in a place of, um, you know, not getting that daily bread, uh, not spending your time with your father, my encouragement is just get up. Just get up. It doesn't have to be for an hour. It doesn't have to be for even half an hour, but that's good. But get up go back to him. I've had to push myself some days, but I always find it so worth it. I always find that the course of my day turns from the left to the right, so to speak, you know? It's awesome. Um, and he never fails. You know, he never, ever fails. He never fails. He beckons for us to come back to him because this is our place. This is why he created us. We're not supposed to do this alone. We really aren't. Um, you know, what peace I have, what peace I have when I return to him. I want to re read a scripture I was reminded of this morning in Isaiah 30, 15. It's not very long. You don't need to go there unless you would like to, but 
This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says, only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. In quietness and confidence is your strength. And it just spoke, it speaks so loudly to me that, you know, he, he doesn't just mean, he doesn't just mean the entire journey, but he means today. You know, you woke up this morning. Did you return to him this morning? Did you return to him today? And that's what we need to do. That's what I had to realize is that what I have done in my life and the faith that I have had, I can't rest on that for the rest of my life. We need to return to him today and, and every day. Uh, what freedom, you know, when we are in that place with him and we know that that spirit, you know, you know, we all know the difference between a, a fire and a flame. You know the difference between a fire and a flame. You know, a fire is going to get something done. But a flame, you know, it just kind of sits there. You know what I mean? Well, draw near to him and he gets that fire moving, you know. He gets that spirit going in you, you know. And you, you just, I rejoice, I rejoice. It's a place of freedom. In James, uh, it says that it describes the word as the perfect law of liberty. How awesome. This word, it gives us rules, it gives us um, a path to follow, but God calls it the perfect law of liberty. That's pretty amazing because he says that if you do know the truth, the truth will indeed set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I, um, I did read from a little publication that I received. I read a little article, and, and the article was entitled, entitled God's Love Letter. And it was like, wow. That's right, this word is not just instruction for life, it's his love letter to us. How awesome. I mean, how do you feel when, I know how we ladies feel, I think you men feel the same, when you receive a letter or a note or a call from someone and they tell you how much they love you or they tell you how much you're remembered or they tell you how much you're appreciated. It just, it's just such a wonderful thing well, this is God's love letter. How can I not want to look in this today? <laughs> How can I not want to have my food? It's okay. We spend time, we spend energy, we spend, spend our strength on everything else. Do we forget our food? How can I minister to my, you know, to my husband? How can we minister? How can you take care of your child? You know, how can we love one another without our food? So I am thankful that um, our sharings were uh, about the word today because it helped me, it, it provoked in me a memory that, of how powerful God's word is. It provoked in me a remembrance that it does say somewhere in the word that God has exalted his word above his name. That's high. You can't really get any higher. So I exhort us to remember that this is God's love letter and to remember the reason. And his, it, um, a quote in that article said, his love redeems those who call on his name. That's what it's all about. His love redeems those who call on his name. So I, I thank you. I think my 10 minutes is about up, but uh, <laughs> it's been um, an honor and a privilege to speak and share and hopefully to minister to each of you today. And uh, I thank you. Thank you, honey. So as you see, we're going to be doing things a little different. We have two more speakers. 
Um, first, I would like to s just a little reminder of what Heidi said. Let us not let life crowd out God and his word. Uh, return to God in his word. Let him fan our flame. We always have that, f that flame, the little flame, little flames, like a pilot light. It's there. It's, it's always there. But the word of God will, f will fan it and make it grow. So thank you, Heidi. I appreciate that. Um, our next speaker, she is a wonderful woman of God. She says it like it is. She also has a heart for children, as does Heidi. Um, and actually, she's one of my granddaughter's teachers. So please welcome Miss Rachel Kutcher. Hello. It's an honor, as Heidi said, to be here today and to be able to share with you a little about um, the Word of God. And uh, if I were to title this, I would title it The Bible Points Us to Christ. When I was eight years old, um, I was raised in a Christian home. I was raised in a church. My parents lived the word as much as they knew it. Um, and they were great parents. Uh, they loved God. They believed in um, living what they believed of the word of God in every aspect of their lives. And they, they lived it out in front of us. They taught it to us. When I was eight years old, um, I was going to these little children's Bible fellowships that there is a lady named Miss Honey. And she would come around in our neighborhood, and, and she went to different neighborhoods as well. And what she did is she would go into the homes of the different uh, families who had children, and they would open up their homes. And she'd go from one home to another so nobody was taxed. And she had this flannel. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but it was like a board, and it had flannel on it. It had Bible scenes on it. And uh, then she had the little Bible characters, and we, she would teach us uh, Bible stories. But she didn't only teach us the stories. She taught the heart of the Word of God. And it was at eight years old that she led me to Christ. And it was a true conversion. As Heidi said, I was going to say the same thing. I already had it planned out, that I was on fire for God at eight years old. But that didn't last. <laughs> but at eight years old, I was on fire for God. By the time I was 12, I was more interested in what everybody else thought of me, so I was following the world. But um, the Bible points us to Christ. Um, it's important that we read our Bibles. But it's not only important that we read our Bibles, but it's important that we meditate on what we read. Um, the Bible's not just a book. It's God's word. It's not all of what's God's word. There's more to it, more to God's word than that. But the Bible is part of God's word. And um, It's not like reading another book. It's a spiritual book. Um, so it needs to be meditated on. You can't just read it on the surface and think you've got it. It doesn't work that way. You have to meditate on the Word of God. And you have to live the Word of God. And it's in living the Word of God that it really releases the power that's in it and in your lives. This word of God isn't just words on a page. It's meant to be lived out in our lives. That's, that's what it's all about. And um, turn to John 6. And in verse 63, this is <coughs> Jesus Christ talking. I could go into the context, and it would be great. There could be a whole teaching in itself, but I have more to cover. 
Um, it says here that it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. So Jesus' spoken words are spirit and life. And that is true of the Bible. It's spirit and it's life. It's not just words on a page. It's words that are meant to be lived out in our lives. And it's words that point to Christ. Turn to 1 Corinthians in chapter 1. And verse 21. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God, God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached. This is talking about the Christ crucified, the gospel. Through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For indeed, Jews ask for signs and Greeks search for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, to the Jews a stumbling block, and to Gentiles foolishness, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. This message is Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. The Bible points us to Christ. Um, turn to Galatians chapter 3. And verse 24. This is talking about the law. That would be the Old Testament law or the Hebrew scriptures, particularly um, Genesis through uh, Deuteronomy. Um, the law has become our tutor to lead us to Christ. That was the reason for the law. There are other reasons for the law, but that was the major reason for the law. It was a tutor to lead us to Christ so that we may be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. Did you hear that? We're no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So we are no longer under the tutor. We're no longer under the law. We have the faith of Christ. We have Christ in us, the hope of glory. We have the spirit of God residing within us. And now that we have the spirit of God residing within us, when we open up this book, it can speak to us in a way that it never spoke to the Old Testament believers because the words in here are spirit in our life. And so we have the spirit in us, if we are Christ's, that we can look at the word of God and it opens up to us. We meditate upon us, it, and it is, it teaches us. It teaches us about life. It teaches us about our daily lives and relationships. It teaches us about all of the little details of our life that we have to deal with. <laughs> you know, it teaches us how to navigate this life according to the Spirit of God. And uh, I'd like to turn to 1 Corinthians 1. The Bible opens up to us when we have the Spirit of God in a way, like I said, that it didn't open up to the Old Testament believers. Um, in verse 20, I already read this. I went out of order, sorry. But I would like to go to 1 Corinthians 2. Because, um, and in verse 14, it says, there's a lot I wanted to read before this, but 
This is the meat of it. A natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. He cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But he is, who is spiritual appraises all things. Yet he himself is appraised by no one, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Um, I wanted to share with you today that this is the word of God. But this is not all there is of the word of God. The word of God allowed the world, world to be created. The word of God spoke through the prophets in the Old Testament to tell Israel when they were off and doing the wrong things. And so the word of God brought them back. The word of God is this book that we can look into. And the word of God is what we preach. The word of God is no good if it sits on our shelves. And the word of God is no good if all we do is read it and take it into our hearts and say, I have all this joy and peace. We're meant to share it. We have something that needs to be shared. And God created the heavens and the earth because he wanted us. He sent his only begotten son for the world, the whole world. Not just those of us who are in this room, not just those of us of the body of Christ who are sitting in churches today, or were sitting in churches yesterday, or uh, have home fellowships. This is for the world, and we need to go out into the world and speak it. Um, turn to Romans. And in chapter 10. And let's uh, go to verse, oh, we'll read a good bit of it. In chapter, in verse 9, a very familiar verse, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. However, they did not all heed the good news, for Israel says, Lord, who has believed our report? So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. In the Old Testament, the law was a tutor to bring us to Christ. Faith comes by hearing, and by hearing the word of Christ. Once we make Jesus Lord, it's not over. As Heidi shared, it's not over. We have to walk with Christ. Our, it's, and you know, let's be honest. There are days when I go to the Bible and I pick it up and it's a dry book. That's, my, that's because I'm not walking with Christ the way I need to. And it was on my heart today just to encourage you that just because you've read the Bible for many years may not mean that Jesus is your Lord. It may mean, sorry, it may mean that you've read words on a page and you've, in your mind, assented to them. But 
They need to be taken into your heart. Maybe they were. When I was eight years old, they were taken into my heart. I was a true believer at that age. When I was 12, it was a different story. I was heading down a different path. When I was 16, there were things in my life that were visible, very visible, that showed that Jesus was not my Lord. But he called me back, and he continues to call me. <laughs> and he continues to call you. So I want, I want to encourage you today that if you feel that the Bible has become dry, if you feel that when you go to the Word, it doesn't speak to your heart, that maybe you need a refreshing of the Spirit of God. Maybe you need to draw near to Christ again. So I'm not going to do, give an altar call, but I want to encourage you that if you feel that that is necessary for your life, that you get some time today to really be with your Lord. And also, I think I encourage you to share this with another person that you can trust so that you can be held accountable and so that you have somebody that can help you in this journey because we don't walk alone in this body of Christ as we are together. If there are divisions among us, if there are our, is bitterness and unforgiveness in our lives. We are not walking as Christ would walk. So we need to come together as servants of Christ and we need to really follow him and walk as Jesus would walk were he here on the earth. We are here in Christ's stead and uh, this is our calling. So I just want to encourage you today, if you are called by Christ today, that you walk out in faith. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for those encouraging words. I also, too, want to exhort you, if, if you don't feel that Jesus is Lord in your heart right now, that you haven't made him Lord, Master, King, Ruler, your head, I encourage you also, too, to grab somebody today and say, well, you know, will you pray with me? Will you help me to go to the cross today? Will you help me to repent? Because I want to make Jesus Lord. There's no greater joy in life. It's so joyful to have Jesus Lord. He's, he's the ruler. He's, he guides this body. He's the head. You know, let's let go. Let's die to our flesh and just give it all to him because that's where the joy is. Thank you, Rachel. I really appreciate that. Our next speaker, she also has a big heart for all of God's people. She loves to love us, and she loves to feed us. Please welcome Ms. Liz McDonald. <laughs> so as um, Heidi and Rachel both um, had said before, I'm, I'm very thankful for the privilege to be able to come up and speak God's word and to share with you. Um, when Victor came up to me and asked me if I would do this, it, it was... Um, it was very timely because we've been talking a lot about God's word and, and I have been talking to myself and confronting myself about maybe I'm not spending the time that I need to. Um, that evening, we were sitting there. Uh, matter of fact, it was last Sunday night. Um, we were sitting there and all of a sudden, I was, I was helping Ken, Kristen and I were doing, spending some family time and we were cooking. And all of a sudden, in the other room, I heard this screech from, my, from Kendall. And as every mother would, and you know, I practically knocked the one child out of the way. I knocked over the garbage can. I found that child, and I made sure she was okay. So every mother knows that this is just how we are. Um, 
And my husband will tell you that if he was in the way, he'd go down too. <laughs> it doesn't matter that he was bigger than me. He'll tell you when it comes to my babies, I, I, I fight for those babies and I hold them near and dear to my heart because that's just the way mommies are. And that night as I was sitting there, God talked to me and he said, well, why aren't you fighting that hard for me? And I went, mm. I also remember my mom, and you know my mom, most of you know her. Um, when we used to go driving in the car, I was 30 years old. Now, any of you moms do this thing? When, when, the, when it gets, when you're we're driving fast and you have to put on the brakes real fast, you put out the arm to protect your baby? Well, I was 30 and she was still doing this. <laughs> And by the way, even after she was blind, so she couldn't even see it coming, when, she f when the car started to stop, I was the one that was driving, and she still did this. <laughs> because she, she, it was a mom. And moms have these passion when it comes to their kids. And they have this love and this instinct that comes out. And um, again, we were talking. I was talking to God, and he said, you know what? Where is that passion? I had it once. I had that passion that said, you know what? I don't care what's going on in the world. This is my time. And so that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about today. And it's so funny because the three of us did not talk. And so I think God's trying to tell us all something in here. Um, but first and foremost, um, if, turn to First Peter 5. In uh, 1 Peter 5, verse 8, it says, Be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And I remember he's out there. But sometimes I forget that in my everyday life. And all moms will tell you, if you're a working mom, you're way too busy. If you're homeschooling mom, guess what? You're way too busy. You don't have time. If you're a single mom, you're way too busy. And guess what, guys? Even the guys will say they're way too busy because all this world comes in and it gets in the way. And this Bible doesn't yell at you. It doesn't say, hello, I'm here. And God doesn't either. He, he doesn't scream out and say, spend time with me. But the problem is there's somebody else out there who can, if he can get us so entangled in everything else in the world and doing good things. I mean, I could serve in the kitchen and be doing great things. I can watch the children downstairs and be doing great things, but if I don't do it with the love of God and I don't keep my head where it's supposed to be in his word, it serves nothing. It does nothing. So it's so easy to be thinking you're doing everything right and just going down the wrong path. So I had to remember that he is out there seeking and he can keep me, he can keep me so wrapped up in the world that I absolutely forget about the one who loves me enough to know every hair on my head. Now, I'm a mom, and sometimes, you, I went down, they took the kids downstairs today, and Kenzie usually runs back, Judy will tell you, she grabs me every week. She didn't grab me this week. And I was, I, it was felt good, but in the back, I was like, oh, mom, wait a minute, you're still supposed to love me so much that you can't leave me. But the God who knows every single hair on my head, I can't remember to spend five minutes with him and his word in the morning, I'm too busy, or maybe I've been, I come home and I've been working, it's been a long day, and I cook, and then I get the kids to bed, and now you ask me to get back up and spend five minutes with him? But wait a minute, she didn't give me a hug and I was insulted. So what about this God who has given us the whole entire world, given us his only son, knows every hair on her head, and guess, by, guess what, by the way, if you go back to him tomorrow, he's still gonna love you. Can he give him five minutes? So I, I said to myself, I need to make choices. And this has been the conversation I've been having with myself all week. Life is about choices. And it's not, what am I gonna choose to do all day long? It's about the little choices that I make every single day. Wait a minute, Liz, you haven't spent any time with God today. Do you wanna watch TV? I know you're tired. You've earned the time to watch some TV. Do you wanna watch TV or do you wanna spend time with the God that we were just talking about? Those are the kind of things that I want to know. Um, make sure I stay on task. Um, turn to, uh, somebody read 1 John 2, 5 for me.
But whoever keeps his word, in him the love of God is truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. Thank you. So we need to keep his word in order to be perfected. Now, I thought that when I became uh, a follower of Christ, I wanted to be as close to God as, per, as, 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 as possible. I wanted to be like Jesus. Now, I'm never going to be perfect, but I can be perfected. And I can work with God to get where I need to do. But in order to do that, where do I need to go? The Word of God. Because how am I going to keep his word if I don't even know what it is? And guess what? If I only spend five minutes a day in the Word of God, how many other minutes in the day am I spending in the world? So I need to keep my head in that so I can work towards perfection. I'm striving for it. You know, if Peter can strive for it, I can strive for it. I need to make sure that I'm heading in the right direction. In Hebrews 4.12, it says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as divisions of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The other thing I realize is the further I get away from the word of God, it's so easy to go down the wrong path. Right? It's so easy. So if I'm in it and I have to make those choices, it's a heck of a lot easier if I'm closer to the word of God. So we need to be diligent to, perso- to, to prove ourselves approved of God. In 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. I got to get in the book to know it. So um, one more thing, because I want to make sure I stay on task. Um, we need, as, as brothers and sisters, to, to spur each other on. Make sure that we're doing the things that we need to do. Um, we need to work together. It's okay for you to come up and say, okay, Liz, I know you're struggling with that reading the, God, the Bible thing. How, how many minutes did you give me this week? It's okay, because I know that a couple of weeks from now, I might get busy, and we need to help each other out. That's what we're all here for, right? I mean, it's not just about ourselves. It's about helping each other out, and if we can help each other out in the little things, I can guarantee in this church there's been some big things. And there will continue to be big things. Most of you know that we're here, know my mother was near and dear to my heart. When she left, it was all of you who made it worthwhile. And when my little baby was one pound, eight ounces, it was all of you who came to to the hospital every single day that made me understand that God is with me. He was living through you. And you got to be connected. And the only way you can be connected is if you're in the Word of God. Because when God tells you, Rose, it's time. Liz needs you. Or, Rose, it's time. Rachel needs you. You can't be, if your head's not in the Word and you're not listening for Him, you might miss it. You might miss it. And I, I pray God that those opportunities, I don't just, I'm so busy in the world that I forget to miss that I miss them because there's one day that you're going to need me and I know God will find somebody else if I'm not doing my job but man I want him to use me okay so um in Deuteronomy 11 I, I wrote it all down just for time's sake but it starts off by this we know that we have come to know him and that we keep his commandments and I already established that in order to keep him we have to know his commandments the one who says I have come to know him and does not keep his ma- commandments is a liar And the truth is not within him. But whoever keeps his word, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. I want to know his word because I want to be able to keep it. And if you go all the way down to verse 18, it goes on to say, You shall therefore impress these words of mine on your heart and on your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall teach them to your sons and your daughters, talking of them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates so that your days and the days of your sons may be multiplied on the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them as long as the heavens remain above the earth. For if you are careful to keep all his commandments which I am commanding you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and hold fast to him, then the Lord will drive out all of these nations before you and you will 
dispossess nations greater and mightier than you. And this is what he promised to them back then. This is what he promises to you today. You need to keep his commandments. But what was really important to me, remember that mom I was telling you about that was so, so worried about her children, she's willing to push them out of the way? Don't I love those children enough that I want them to learn the words of God, that I want them to have it on their doorpost and on their foreheads and on their hands? If I want to protect them, part of that protection and love is giving them the word of God. I can't give it to them if I don't know it. And they need to see when these things happen, when we deal with the issues in the hospital, when we deal with somebody passing away, when we deal with everything that happens in every day, that the first thing we do is we go to the throne and we say, God, help us. There's a song out there called Be Careful Little Eyes What You See. They see it. They see where you go. They see when you get up in the morning and that word of God is, is open, and they also see you on the TV. So I don't want to just learn this word of God for me. I've got two babies that are out there that tw 15 years from now, they have to make choices. And I want them to make the same choices that I would have wanted them to make. I want them to live a better life than I did. And since this weekend was mostly about the women and the moms, I know you want to do that too. So let's go out there and learn the word of God the way that we need to learn it. So not only for ourselves, but for the, the children who come after us, that they see us and know that we love the, our God with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our mind. And we love him enough to take five minutes to read his word. And that's what I have to share. Wonderful. Wow, that was powerful. What an exhortation. I love it. Um, thank you, Liz. Just a couple of things that she said is, um, keep his word in you. The love of God truly is perfected when you keep the word. Let God use us. And then Deuteronomy 11, that's a great section of scripture that talks about, exhorts us to keep his commandments. And um, we need help doing that, you know? We need the Spirit of God like Rachel was talking about. We need Christ. Because there was a time in my life I tried to do this all with my flesh and try to perfect my flesh or, you know, renew my mind by doing it with my flesh. You can't do that. We need Jesus. We need Christ. We need the Spirit to help us to keep his commandments. And we are a family, and we do need to stick together and help each other. And I think that we do. I think that we do love each other and exhort each other. And um, I'm just really blessed with this day, and I'm glad that we all had a chance to be here together. So, Marcy, we're going to.